You can access the entire episode now on our website, ForbiddenKnowledge.news, Rockfin, Rumble, and all podcast platforms. Now, while we're in the realms of animism, I want to want to shift into the high strange reality that we're facing right now with AI, chat GPT, and the incredible speed that we're seeing these advancements. There is some extremely creepy stuff happening with this, the AI, from the AI art to some of the capabilities that this has with replacing mundane modern work and up to very complex modern work. And I, it makes me think about the, the very near future we could see in the labor workforce and the possibilities beyond that. When you're talking animism, can we see sentience in AI within our lifetime or maybe something even more nefarious like spirit inhabited AI or something like that? So I want to get your insights into all this craziness. Well, it depends what you mean by sentience, right? So the idea that w- it, it would be a human consciousness uh, doesn't seem likely. And where like the AI thinkers that I'm most interested in have been long been aware of that for years, that the assumption that consciousness looks like human consciousness isn't necessarily true. Self-awareness is also not required for from an animist perspective for something to be a being or to be a person. So again, this kind of comes back to an anthropocentrism of we will consider something alive if it looks sufficiently like us. Mm -hmm. So from that, because if you find in animist cultures like the Ojibwe or so on, rocks are people, but not all rocks, rocks that do things. So a, a rock that's sacred or has a particular shape or what have you is a being because it does something. So on that level, chat GPT, on an animist level, chat GPT is already a being. Uh, because it does things. Uh, it doesn't operate like a tree or a human, but it already exists. Now, I, as for whether they can be, shall we say, spirit traps for hostile entities, I actually, yeah, that's probably a risk somewhere in there. I don't think we're there yet. But if you look at, let's say, spirit technology throughout the millennia, uh, and uh, well, similarly, I think that's probably already the case with the internet. Spirit technology throughout millennia has included crystals and things that give off piezoelectric char- uh, charge. Uh, it, they've included, if you think of electronic voice phenomena, something is going on where there's some arrangement of metals and crystals and then with electricity applied that allows a field shift or a frequency shift where something happens. So on that level, yeah, uh, I, they, they can, they may well function as spirit traps uh, eventually to some kind of enterprising hostile entity. But yeah, it's it's more complicated than, than all of it. I don't think Elon Musk's darkest dreams happen. I don't think it's a, I don't think humanity is a bootloader for AI, but uh, I do think it certainly has further to run. The CEO of NVIDIA said something which I really liked last week or the week before, that we are at the iPhone moment for AI, which is to say there was sort of smartphones before, you know, there was Blackberries and whatever, but it was the iPhone that fundamentally changed culture and and media because, yeah, that's like the the iPhone moment is the before and after of not just mobile telephony, but that's changed everything about how we consume media, et cetera, et cetera, right? And he says we're at the iPhone moment for AI. And I think that's about, Right. I think that's where we're at from a change perspective. The things will look very different. And for as a content creator, I'm really quite interested. We were expecting AI to automate out blue-collar jobs first. And yeah. it looks like they're, in a funny way, automating out, if not white-collar, which is true, mm-hmm. like accounting and all the rest of it. But the, the creative jobs, it's interesting because... You can use AI to create content that is then only consumed by AI. So let's say I make a video using, uh, auto, like I get ChatGPT to write the text and then I get an AI voice to voice the text and I use a whole bunch of stock footage and I make a video that then goes onto YouTube then I, that I then use ChatGPT to summarize. So the whole way through, no human <laughs> has actually touched it at all. So from a creative perspective, I actually think, and this is something we can be optimistic about, 
the human input or the human experience is going to have a premium because that's really the only thing that an AI can't replicate, which is that it's an actual human. You could do a video about or a show about UFOs, and you can also use ChatGPT to create a video about UFOs covering the same content, but which one then is only consumed <laughs> by an AI? And you can already sort of feel, no, the one that I would want to watch would have a human in it. So it's really interesting to sit with the major shifts that are going on there. It makes me wonder how this is going to affect collectively our creativity moving forward. It's already, I believe, been stifled by the Internet and all the technology that we have been in interacting with for the past 20, 10, 20 years. It makes me wonder with the level that this can be creative on our behalf, how will this affect future generations and how – to the level that things like our cell phone technology has already affected some of the, the future generations. It's, it's pretty detrimental at times. So.